Hi folks, um, my name is Chris Truola and I am retiring this year and it is the end of 2023. I've worked here at General McLean my entire teaching career. Um, fresh out of student teaching way back in 1992. I didn't go into education straight out of uh, high school. I didn't go into college. In fact, I never thought I would have been a teacher, um, but I ended up a teacher and I ended up here at General McLean. I actually grew up in General McLean, graduated from General McLean, and then went on and did some stuff and then came back to college at Edinburgh. And anyway, so here I am. And um, the super and uh, the curriculum coordinator asked me to make this video and answer a couple questions to just kind of like uh, give you an idea of what I've seen and done and what I've, you know, some of my uh, thoughts and stuff like that. But anyways, um, there's four questions and that I'm going to answer. The first one is, what's something that you wish someone had told you when you first started as a teacher? Um, wow. Um, from a practical point of view, um, I wish somebody had told me, document everything. Um, get yourself a spiral notebook record the date, the time you have interactions of significance with children. Not just po negative, but positive as well. Um, create a profile of your classroom through documentation, anecdotal records in a spiral notebook, as well as through emails, as well as through power school and school edu communications. Because if you create a really clear profile of your class and what happens in your class, you will save yourself so many headaches when you're meeting with parents, administrators, and teaching students. And again, it's not just negative documentation, it's all documentation. I wish I'd known that. It took me five years into my career to realize that making good, accurate notes and documenting what goes on in your classroom um, is important and it will save you so many headaches. Um, so that's one of them. I, I also, but you know, that's a more practical uh, piece of advice that I wish somebody had given me right out of the gate. Um, the second thing is I wish somebody told me it would be over before it actually began. Okay. Um, th the days are long, but the years are short. And if you're watching this video and you're starting your career right now, uh, thank you for being in this career, this, this field. Um, and there will be so many days that, that it will seem so long, but before you know it, you're going to be sitting here thinking, man, where did 30 plus years go? Um, enjoy every single day. And I wish somebody had told me and reminded me it's going to be over before you know it. So enjoy the job. Enjoy the opportunity to work with children. Okay. All right. So second question. Second question. What, what's something important that you've learned during your career? Um, from a practical point of view, when your administrators, what I've learned during my career from a practical point of view when your administrators come to you with new programs, new um, procedures, embrace them. Um, they're very well, your administrators are well read. They see the writing on the wall differently than the teacher does because of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So when they bring a program, try to embrace every new program as a possibility to grow and become better and more efficient at what you do. Um, but then from a more philosophical point of view, um, what's something important that you've learned during your career? Um, the biggest thing that I've learned as just a teacher who interacts with kids is that kids don't change. Kids have not changed in thousands of years. Um, what Socrates probably did to keep kids managed well, we are still doing today. Um, kids have always done the pokey jabby, they always will. What has changed is the world around them and the way adults treat them. So, you know, all that nonsense you've learned about child development and Piaget, um, it's still here. Even though our children are now digital 
natives and have grown up in the digital world and they are still children at heart. They still need real life interactive lessons. They still need the opportunity to apply in creative and unique ways what they're learning. Um, in other words, their brains are set for the real world. And, you know, I've learned that you need to address that type of experience. In other words, you need to give kids real world applications of what it is they're learning. You, you don't have to give them assessments and tests on a re repeated basis to figure out what they know. Have them apply what they've learned in a real world situation and then you'll really know what they're learning. Um, so that's what I would re that's what I would say in terms of something important that I've learned in my career and, and that is kids haven't changed and embrace the change that your administrators want you to make. Okay, so number three, what is it, what has it meant to be a Lancer? Well, um, it's meant a lot of good things. It's meant um, putting in a lot of longer hours than you need to. It's meant um, taking pride in how you form your craft, how you do your craft. Um, I think when I came to General McLean, and I think that it still is, it's one of these schools where we truly try to set ourselves apart from other schools by focusing on the child and, and every child, the individual child, the individual, okay? Um, it's meant having, being a Lancer has meant being on incredibly good teams throughout my career, um, working with very good professionals, um, truly, you know, and I'm lucky because I was hired with one of the best team and set of administrators I've ever had, and I'm leaving with some of the best team members I've ever worked with and best administrators. So being a Lancer meant, meant and still means that I'm part of a community. I am part of a bigger group that is on the same, that is consistently on the same wavelength with, you know, taking pride in what we do, um, striving to be the best at what we can, regardless of how hard it is to keep reaching that. Um, and it, it means accepting failure and trying again. Um, so I, I guess that's what it means to be a Lancer. It, it means that um, you do the best that you can, no matter how difficult it might be, or, you know, that's, that's what it means. Um, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Always will be. <laughs> um, number four, what other sage advice do you have for the folks new to the profession or new to the district? Ah, well, I would have to say that when it's all said and done, what you did and what you do makes a difference with the kids. Um, my sage old advice is that kids, no matter what, they, you know, they want your time. Some kids want a little of your time. Some kids need a lot of your time. But each and every one of those kids that's gonna sit in front of you and work with you wants to be a part of your world. They want to know what it is you have for them. And boy, oh boy, they are gonna hold you to it. They, you know, they want to have high standards and they will raise their standards as high as yours are. So set your standards high so that they can have the high standards that they want. Now, it doesn't mean they're not gonna fight you on it. It doesn't mean that you might not have to drag them close to the bar to get them up over it, but set that bar high and give them the means for getting over it because um, what you do with these kids is important. What they see in you is important how you say good morning to them is important. They, they truly know and look for a professional, okay? So my sage advice would be, be as professional as you possibly can, all right? All right, that's it. That's all I have to say. Good luck in your career. Welcome to the Lancer family. Um, you're part of a good thing here. Enjoy.